Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be setting up self-hosted runners for our GitHub server instance here in the lab. I'm going to do this in two ways. The first way is we're going to have a uh, self-hosted runner at the enterprise level from a uh, Linux machine. And when it's at the enterprise level, that just means that all orgs and repos within that enterprise can have access to that runner. And uh, it just simplifies it for me. And then we're going to do OpenShift uh, hosted runners. And there is a requirement that the OpenShift hosted runners are uh, uh, configured at the organization level. And so we're going to do that. And then all repos within that particular organization could have access to those runners. Um, and then I'm going to also configure HPA on the OpenShift hosted runners so they can dynamically allocate resources as necessary for actions jobs. OK, so let's get started. Um, the first thing is we've got our uh, lab environment set up here, and I've got this uh, OCP dude organization. But let's just roll back to the enterprise, and we'll take a look at uh, policies here and then actions. And this is where our runners are stored. And we can see that I should have one runner here. This is from the Bastion host red station. I'm going to be creating a new runner uh, at the enterprise level here. And that runner uh, will eventually replace this one because I don't want this on the uh, on the Bastion host any longer. I do have a terminal session already up, and we'll use this as our uh, initial configuration here. So it's pretty simple. Um, I should also mention that I already have GitHub Connect established. I have a uh, enterprise account that it's linked to. You don't need a cloud uh, instance. You just need an enterprise account, uh, enterprise account, and it's pretty simple. It just says you know link your enterprise and then. You uh, select it, it'll be in a menu list, and then you can enable whatever features you want. In this case, I want to enable uh, Actions and Dependabot. And for this uh, Dependabot option, what it does is it pulls down that uh, um, the known vulnerability uh, database, and then it can compare the code to that database. And then through uh, the runners that are configured at, the, at an org level, it will automatically create pull requests to uh, bump up your code to versions that are not affected by those known CVEs. So it doesn't necessarily take you to latest, but it takes you to the level that uh, is above that CVE. And it'll automatically generate a new branch and a pull request for that. And then you can uh, you know, further automate that if you want just to approve it and merge it. Or you can you know, work through the process that you verify and test uh, that pull request and then merge it uh, manually uh, as necessary. And then of course I, I do use actions. So uh, by enabling this, it means that I don't have to manually sync my actions down to uh, my uh, on-prem instance any longer. If I uh, configure an action within a workflow, it'll automatically pull that action down for me and uh, deploy it in my instance. So it'll simplify the uh, uh, management of my actions. So I've got GitHub Connect already established. Okay. So let's take a look at that enterprise again. Uh, yeah, it was under policies, actions, and then we'll just create runner and we'll say new runner. And then it just gives you uh, this little menu and all the copy paste scripts necessary to configure your runner. So we're doing Linux x64, and then I just need to copy all this down into my host. And we'll just do that one by one. I'm going to skip validating the hash. I know it's good. We'll extract it and then we can go through and configure it. And this is the important part because this is the token that we're going to pass it. And again, we're at the enterprise level, not at the org level. The token would be different uh, if it was at the uh, org level. So copy that, paste it here. And this should provide us a couple of options. Um, so you know, enter the name of the runner group. You can just like uh, enter for default. I'm going to do default. Enter the name of the runner. Uh, it by default selects the host name, which is in my case Boz. Um, so I'm going to keep that. And then if you want to add any additional labels to it, I don't necessarily need to add any labels. The default labels are self-hosted Linux and x64. Um, but if you have a pool of resources that you want to uh, target, uh, labels are a really good way to uh, apply that. Um, I'm just going to keep these as they are. That way I could just say it's running on self-hosted and then uh, it'll just pick up this runner because it'll be the only self-hosted runner left. So enter that to skip. And you'll see that I changed this. I'll add uh, OpenShift and uh, Dependabot to the uh, org runners when I create those. Uh, working folder is fine. Now all those settings have been saved. And you can see this says run. 
uh, to run it. But if we want to install it as a service, it already has this service script. And we're going to run that. And it does require sudo. And uh, if we do help, it'll give you the options here. And we're going to install it. And then we're going to start it. Okay, so now it's uh, it's running, and the runners when they make their connection, uh, the Linux host is making the connection to uh, the GitHub server. So there's no uh, firewalls I need to necessarily open on the runner side to make this uh, to make this connection. So let's take a look at our runners now. And here we have our two runners, RedStation and Boz. And then again, because I've uh, got the, I didn't add Boz as a, uh, as, a um, uh, as a label. When I run an action, I just need to tag it as self-hosted and it'll pull uh, Boz from here. You can also break these down obviously with multiple labels. It has to match all of them that are in your uh, runs on script. Uh, so again, this would be self-hosted for me, but if I had multiple ones, let's say I had Linux ARM as well, I might want to just say, you know, ARM, or I might want to say self-hosted Linux uh, ARM, right? So you just, it has to match all of them in the, uh, in the label group. Now, like if I wanted to run this on RedStation, even though it says self-hosted, if I said self-hosted, it would run on either one of these, but I could say RedStation and it would run on this one. All right, so just to kind of point that out. Okay, so that's it. I mean, we've got our runners running. Uh, we've got our service started. Uh, and now we just need to do the one at our organization level. So we've got our organization. We can take a look at the runners that are here. Actions. And then runners. And you can see that the two have been provisioned from the enterprise uh, to this organization. Again, all orgs and repos under uh, that enterprise now has access to these runners. All right, so now we're going to apply a GitHub app, and then we're going to uh, create the OpenShift hosted runners within, a, uh, uh, within our environment and get that configured. So let's go to the marketplace here, and then we can just do a search for, um, let's see, Red Hat. And these are uh, verified, um, uh, verified uh, actions and you see here this OpenShift self-hosted runner installer that's the one we're looking for and if we scroll down a little bit you can see that we do require Helm, uh, OC, and kubectl those have been installed on my uh, on my host here all right I think this one's it so we'll pull that up and here's our, our our chart so this gives us our our Helm command to actually add it and yes so here's the area that we would use to install our runner, we've got a couple of options here. Here's the pat, and here's the GitHub app. So this is the correct screen. I'll leave all the links uh, in the description and or uh, put this all in a script in GitHub so you're able to just uh, grab those details. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and we'll clear this out, and then we'll do OC new project. And we'll call it um, GitHub. Enterprise server, okay, D runners. All right, clear that out. And so we'll grab this command here, copy that, sudo, <clears throat> there we go. And then sudo helm uh, repo list, there we go. Sudo helm repo, repo, it's update, there we go. Okay, so now we've got our Helm repo added. Uh, we scroll down here. We're not scoping it there or there. So we need to run, we need to take, out, take a look at this readme here for the runner. So next page, and then runner registration, uh, create the GitHub app on our account or create GitHub app for the organization. This is what we're gonna do. Essentially, you want to, uh, that this is a hyperlink with an org in there and you wanna get that to change. So if we just copy this so I can show you. And you can see that it already provides uh, the hook for us with a lot of uh, information, but we have the org here that we have to change to the organization that we wanna assign this app to. And then you 
paste this into the browser and you can see that it'll automatically link it to our um, to our server here okay so I've got that off screen already um, and for me I have to uh, not only change this org but uh, it's not linking to github.com it's linking to my uh, to my uh, my instance of server here so I'm changing that so if we just uh, paste out what I'm going to be putting in you can see that it's github redcloud.land and then uh, OCP dude is the organization. Now it is capitalized here. That's just the display name. If we go to the actual organizations, you'll see that it's all lowercase. It's a good idea to keep it all lowercase. GitHub server is uh, case sensitive. Um, so let's uh, yeah go back to that. And then we will take this, copy that into our browser. Let's get a new tab here, browser. There we go. And then we just give the, the app a name and we could just say like OK, OKD runners. Uh, and then all this other information has already been filled out. You can make some uh, adjustments to the uh, privileges if you want. Uh, I'm just going to accept everything here as the default and install it. I just wanted to give it a, that name and then we can scroll down to the bottom here and then only on this account, any account. Uh, so only um, Install it in the OCB dude. Uh, yep, so we'll create that. Uh, okay, so we need to make sure we remember our app ID is seven. We're going to need that with our uh, configuration. And let's see, we need to create a private key down here. So go ahead and create a private key. And this, uh, you probably didn't notice, uh, but it automatically downloaded this uh, private key to my uh, downloads folder. And we'll need to reference this as part of our install here. All right, so, and you could add a, a logo to it if you wanted. Let's do that. And we'll just grab like this OpenShift logo. There we go, set that as the avatar. Perfect, okay. So now that that's done, we've got our app, we've got our app assigned, uh, and now we just need to install the app. And right here, we just say we're gonna install it into uh, OCP dude so it went from general to install app here and then if we look at this top screen is that it uh, no not there yet okay now we can click install uh, all repositories within this organization or you can select uh, individual repositories I'm going to say all repositories in that org can have access to that and I'm just going to check this one more time yeah all right so this other identifier 17 when we uh, install the runner from helm we want to make sure we capture this installation uh, tag as well so i got to remember that it was 17 i'll make a note of that off screen all right so now we're at our organization we've just got a, an app assigned to that and now we can go through the uh, rest of our installation uh, to uh, build our runners uh, within openshift Okay, I went ahead and set that pem file as a environment variable, so we'll pass that in right here. Our uh, app ID was seven. Uh, our install ID was 17, if you recall that. Uh, the uh, owner, uh, OCP dude, the domain, uh, git.redcloud.land. I'm adding a couple of additional labels here, one in OpenShift. That way, when I uh, run actions, I could just say, you know, runs on OpenShift, then it'll target these runners instead of the self hosted Linux runner. And then uh, any uh, runners you want to enable Dependabot, uh, you'll need to label those. So we're labeling these. That way Dependabot can use OpenShift to run its actions. Uh, we're going to create a runner group OpenShift and then change some of these uh, resources. I think the default is 100 and uh, 250. We're changing that to 250 and 500 here. Um, all right. And then uh, following the instructions, we've got, you know, echo string and then uh, deployer manifest. So let's give that a shot. All right, looks like that deployed correctly. And if we go to our project, uh, looks like we got a pod spinning up. There we go, just connected. And we can go back to OpenShift and let's refresh that. Might take a moment. Oh, we got an error. Oh, cannot find the group. Got to pre-create my group. All right, good to know. All right, so let's uh, new runner group. There we go. Open shift. I thought it would create it dynamically. I guess I was completely wrong. Uh, all repositories, create a group. 
There we go. And we'll just kill this one. Let's go back to runners over here. All right, now it looks like it's running. We'll refresh this side. There we go. All right, so now our runners uh, connected. You can see our two labels here, OpenShift and Dependabot. So that'll be used. And let's just wait till these come up on idle. There we go. All right, so our deployment name is Actions Runner. Now let's go ahead and set up HPA. And we'll just say deployment name Actions Runner. Uh, and then minimum one, say a maximum of five. Uh, CPUs targeted, 50% uh, utilization. Sure, let's do 75%. And then you lose, yeah, da, 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 that looks right. And we'll say OKD, no, uh, runner, HPA. And, oops. GHES, okay, D, eh, whatever. Create. All right, so now we can go to our deployments, and this is show that it's, uh, there we go. All right, so now we've got auto scaling enabled. It'll control uh, these pods, and still got the one pod there. All right, just had to restart, okay. So now we've got one pod up. All right, good. And we can refresh this. It's active, so it must be running a job already. <laughs> that was quick. I must have had something uh, targeted here already in that in a repo. Let's go back to here. I've only got a couple of repos. Let's see what actions are running. Oh, there we go. All right, so I had an existing repo that must have been labeled. Oh, Dependabot. All right, there we go. All right, so Dependabot's already running. Okay, great. So there we go. We've actually set up two runners, one for uh, a Linux uh, at the enterprise level, and then we've got these uh, automatic runners that are dynamically scaling. And it looks like the job completed already, so that was, that was quick. Okay, great. Uh, but these will dynamically scale as well. Uh, as more jobs uh, go into it. All right, so that's it for this demo. Uh, again, two runner types, uh, plus we mentioned uh, GitHub Connect. So I hope this helps you can configure your runners uh, so you can start playing with actions within your uh, particular lab environments.